Je de condense de francés. Eso cuando mucha me meto con cuando mamá es cotí. Pero yo cuando otro por cinco catamba me me. Companies that surface around the wheel tire and suspension industry usually revolve around a few specific countries. The United States of America, Japan, the United States of America, and Germany. But we're going to take it back to a different country. A country of Chanel and the Tour de France and eating cow udders. Today we're going to be talking about the wonderful country and the host of one of the largest tire manufacturers in the world, Michelin Tire. Michelin was founded back in 1832 by two people, Aristide and Edouard. But these two brothers actually weren't even planning on getting involved into the Michelin Tire name and it wasn't called Michelin until probably around six decades later. It wasn't until 1889 when Andrew and Edouard overtook the brand and renamed it Michelin C. Maha. Michelin C. The company was based out of Clermont-Ferrand, France. And back in the day, just to give you perspective in the late 80s, 1880s, because that needs clarification, the Eiffel Tower wasn't actually even built yet. It only had the first two pieces of it. That's how old the Michelin company really is. They began the business by making bicycle tires and other pneumatic tires, but really what set Michelin up into what they are known for today was simply because they were never really planning on getting into the automotive tire business. But what had ended up happening was that they had somebody come over to their factory, an individual that we will call him Roger because I don't know any other French names. And while well, Roger needed to have his tire replaced on his bicycle, the two brothers ended up wanting to get the tire replaced, so they went at it at their own factory and it took them over three hours to replace this tire. What ended up happening? Well, they let the glue sit and they had to peel it off and rip it back on. The next morning they went to test out this tire that they had finally replaced for the bicycle and turns out it didn't last nothing more than a few short hundred meters. But the two brothers are so convinced that the future rode on some form of rubber detachable tire that they went in to develop the first, well, retractable, mountable, detachable tire that you could put on a bicycle. They were so convinced that they entered it into the 1895 Paris Bordeaux bicycle race. And guess what? They didn't win. But I mean, it, there was a little bit of a buildup that made you feel pretty good. But for the most part, people were interested in how in the hell this company managed to get a hold of a demountable tire. And from there, the two brothers realized and the team that they had behind them that they could probably do something with that technology. There wasn't necessarily competition of an already existing market of, well, car tires. There was rubber tire manufacturing and that was already pretty limited in France. But what there really wasn't at all was like a car industry, like, there's no competition because it didn't exist. So they began to grow the company name through word of mouth because they wanted to get involved in everything possible and they wanted to convince people that rubber tires and the way that they were making them was the future. And they were gonna do that with the introduction of this little known technology that was kind of buzzing around back in the day, the automobile. So what did the company do to combat the curve of people not thinking that the automobile was to take off? Because while it was too expensive, it wasn't reliable, it was difficult to manage, the things were glorified carriages. There was nothing that would, anybody would want at all out of an automobile. They were just junk, they were so huh, they were just garbage. Well, what they decided to do is that Michelin was like, hey, we're gonna make some roadmaps. 35,000 of them to be exact, and they they produced them and tried to get them, everybody, all over France to convince people that roadmaps were the future so that people could travel to places that they couldn't before. In fact, they were a red binding roadmap that is still considered probably one of the founding reasons that Michelin is where it is to this day. Michelin had to figure out a way to convince people that this was needed. So could you imagine making a roadmap for a country that really didn't have any need for it and making a thousand, 35,000 copies and expecting it to go well? I mean, it's not like you're gonna be going through the road on a, you, you, whatever the car was called at the time, like chocolate bleu francais, this one has air conditioning. Even though essentially that's what it was, the entire roadmap pedigree, the whole purpose of it was to convince people to travel. And this is where it gets fun. You know Michelin's fluffy dude? Yeah, that actually came from a trade show back in 1898 when Michelin was partaking in one of their bicycle trade shows where they mounted a bunch of bicycle tires in the shape of a man. Ultimately, what that became is their mascot. And even though the 21st century one is cute and cuddly, the 19th century one wasn't so much. In fact, it looked like a bad rendition of some sort of X-Men character. His name is Bembendum. Yes, Bebendum. From there, Michelin began to get more involved in every everybody's traveling journeys and by 1908 they made an itinerary office in France where people could share their car journeys and that they could share them with other people that were looking to be involved in traveling across the country. It was clear that Michelin was planning on just getting involved with everything that had to be associated with driving much more than just supplying rubber tires 
And this is where it starts to really work for Michelin because everybody just knew Michelin as the company that did that. They got so involved that some people almost mistook Michelin as some sort of government entity because they were just involved in a lot of different stuff that the government really wasn't doing. But literally most of Michelin's history is about their roadmaps. It's like, it was so fundamentally crucial to Michelin's success that most of their history is founded around that. And the fact that they were one of the first companies to introduce road markers in France, and they were one of the only ones allowed to do so. Michelin began to grow and got more involved in everything because they could. And we're gonna list off a couple of little historical markers that just made Michelin even a bigger company. In 1914, they got involved in the war efforts where Michelin had to switch their assembly lines to take care of airplanes and make rubber tires for that, which is a pretty cool fact. In 1931, they became the first company to make road markers and signs. By 1935, they partnered with Citrion that held on for nearly four decades. In 1937, they made a truck tire with a steel casing. And can you guess it? They were the first ones to do that too. Then finally, in 1946, they truly made history. They made history in the sense that every single tire pretty much out there right now is using this technology. And this is what really put Michelin on the map. In 1946, and as long as we don't include the invention back in 1915, Michelin was the first company to truly coin the radio tire. Now in case you've been living under a rock, the radial tire is a tire that just allows for more flexibility, greater fuel efficiency, and it's pretty much considered just the way to make a tire these days. And that tire design essentially took over the market share in the late 60s until it either snuffed out competition that didn't believe in the radial tire, or it took over companies like Uniroyal, which by the way is right next to my hometown. In fact, it's actually in my hometown. Shout out to Eau Claire. What up? By 1968, Michelin had grown into North America, and from there, they just didn't stop. And once they hit the international play, Michelin got involved in motorsport and they were one of the first radial tires to get involved in Formula One and win with the Ferrari racing team. At this point Michelin was really into everything whether it was motorcycle, bicycle tires, truck tires, commercial tires, passenger tires, airplane tires, train tires because Michelin made a train looking car thing that had tires on it. I mean Michelin was really doing everything they possibly could to stay on top of the market. By the 21st century they became the second largest tire manufacturer in the world just coming in inches behind number one. They've owned other companies that you could take such as BF Goodrich, Kleber, Tiger, Ricken, Uniroyal, Comoran, and probably a few others. Hosting over 190 million manufactured tires, 16.5 million products sold, and over 170 countries that Michelin does business in, Michelin is just one of those companies that is, well, relatively speaking, absolutely f***ing massive. I mean, they have 114,000 people working for them. They did 22 billion in net sales. Number one in innovation in the tire industry. They're pretty much all over the place when it comes to tires, and when you look at their actual tires, they're not that bad. Michelin doesn't have a huge, I would say, market in the aftermarket community, nothing like Nitto or Toyo, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this company is a slouch by any means. Michelin is still one of those companies that I don't think is gonna go away anytime soon, and their history of the company is massive and it evolves around roadmaps for like six decades. I'm done reading about roadmaps. So if you're interested in Michelin tires or wheels, tire suspension, or anything like that related, we have Tane on the website too. Check out fitmentindustries.com. We appreciate it if you want to go out there and take a look at it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Michelin Tire History. Let us know in the comments what you'd like us to cover next. And of course, we'll pick a lucky random winner down below. If you can convince us what the coolest car in the world is, we'll send you out a gear pack. My name is Alex from Fitment Industries, and we'll see you later. Peace.